So as almost per usual, but before I start a video, I usually talk about something random, so I've mostly got two things. One, uh, if it looks like my hair is a little messed up, that's because uh, earlier I had taken a shower and I decided to put gel in my hair, which I don't do very often, but I felt like it. And I messed up the hair so much that I decided to try to wash it again with just plain water, no soap try to get it out and it kind of messed up the hair and then I just put on this hat the entire night so it, it's just my hair just doesn't feel right and everything so I, don't know, I felt like I needed to throw that out because I know earlier I looked in the mirror and my hair looked completely terrible but yeah anyway that that's where that is um, also new update I got a couple of new posters I know that's only two right now but there's a couple of other posters that are off to the side that are a little too big to fit right here. I'm gonna have to move the bookshelf, but uh, you know, I got now I got a Raiders of the Lost Ark one. I got a Harry Potter one. I've got an Avengers Infinity War one that's over in the corner. I'll put out. You guys will see it whenever I put it up. And I also got a big ass. I'm I was surprised how big the poster was when I got it, but it was a it's a big ass uh, Blade Runner 2049 poster. You know the the classic uh, red and blue one that everybody knows about. I love that one. Oh, and also, uh, I, I gotta point this out, my wife actually bought this for me, it's a, a Love Pop card, and it's, um, if, if it's a little confusing as to what this is, it's an X-Wing going down uh, one of the trenches in, uh, at the Death Star in Star Wars, and she got that for me, um, she actually got it for me for my birthday, and... Um, what is this? I'm filming this on a Saturday. This coming Wednesday, the 27th, is actually, uh, is actually my birthday. And I'm not sure what I'll be doing on that day. I'll probably be working, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to be 23, and I, I already know that I'm not going to feel very different than how I am right now. I, you know... As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, once you hit 21, everything kind of feels about the same each year. But, I don't know, I guess, I don't know how um, how else to look at this. But anyway, uh, let's not keep rambling, let's go ahead and get into the review. So, uh, How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World is the final installment in this franchise. And it follows the villagers again of the town of Burke. Uh, as they continue to uh, rescue captured dragons and, you know, bring them back to Burke to live in harmony with, uh, you know, humans. And, well, their efforts have begun to make them a bit a big target for those who would either capture, uh, enslave, or outright kill dragons. And uh, because of this, Hiccup decides to set out to find the Hidden World, which is uh, a safe haven for, uh, or a rumored safe haven for dragons that uh, Hiccup's father, Stoic, had once told him about when he was younger. And, you know, they, Hiccup wants to take uh, everybody there uh, along with the dragons so that they can continue to live in that harmony. Along the way, uh, Toothless and Hiccup find out that, she, that he is not the only Night Fury. They come across a female one, which they term the Light Fury, and, um, you know, this kind, of begun, this kind of begins a romantic relationship between Toothless and the said Light Fury. Now, for those of the uninitiated, which is what I always call people who've never seen any of my videos, the way that I break down my thoughts on a movie is I do a simple pro and con list, or simple, I guess, is probably not the best word uh, for it, but basically... Um, anybody who doesn't know what a pro and con list are, is, or somebody who's never done one before, it's pretty simple, you know. Uh, the pros are the things that I thought were good in the movie, and the, uh, and the cons are things that I thought were either just bad, or, um, just lacking in a certain quality or grace. But, you know, pretty simple like that. And sometimes I do combine, um... Or I do kind of uh, mix and match, like I'll, I'll be in a pro and then I'll throw in a con just because it, uh, you can easily uh, transition. It depends on how I say everything, whether that actually happens, but it does happen occasionally. But I'll try to keep each section separately. But anyway, there's your disclaimer. Let's go ahead and get into my pro and con list. First off, let's start with the animation itself, which has always been the best part in these films, 
as well as the next pro, which is kind of a part of it, but I'll keep that separate. Um, you know, the animation is at its best in the Hidden World. It, it was chock full of scenes with great detail. Uh, to the point where there would be many there would be a few scenes where there's many dragons just in one frame, you know, just plastered all over the screen, and it it just it was so filled with life, and not like they basically did a copy and paste job with a bunch of dragons. It actually felt like each thing was just generated for that particular space, and there would even be points where uh, some of the characters. Um, were shown from behind, and, you know, they would either look live-action or just a certain part of their body, like, uh, let's say their hair, for instance, would f would look uber-realistic. And the last time that I focused uh, on, am or on animation simulating live-action or uh, realism in any way was back when I reviewed Coco. And... That just shows how far uh, DreamWorks has come, and shows that they are not too far off from Pixar and Disney as far as, like, uh, making more uh, realistic animation. And tied to the animation as far as, uh, like, the, the best parts of each movie, the action sequences, once again, are showcased beautifully, and I'm not surprised because, and I will definitely repeat this fact when we get to... Uh, or when I get to reviewing the other two movies, but Roger Deakins, the cinematographer for, uh, I actually wrote down a list of movies, um, the cinematographer of films such as, or like, whatever, um, The Shawshank Redemption, Fargo, The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men, True Grit, Skyfall, Prisoners, Sicario, and Blade Runner 2049, was a visual consultant on all three films on how the sequences uh, were helmed and how each shot should be showcased as though, uh, you know, as though they were using real cameras in a real space. And this aspect continues to be another crowning achievement for this franchise. The sections involving Toothless and the Light Fury were all well done and, you know, mo they were the moments where I felt the most invested in the plot. And it actually, um, this, this one leads to my favorite scene in the movie, which deserves its own pro number. And that's, uh, it's that scene that's showcased in the trailers where Toothless is trying to woo the Light Fury by doing uh, a couple of uh, random dances as well as a couple other things that happen in the movie that I will not spoil. But it, it's the best scene in the entire movie, and it's actually better than what is showcased in the trailers, which seems to really be a tough thing these days. It's, it almost feels like uh, the most um, the most entertaining scenes in movies are just showcased fully in the trailers these days. So I was happy to see that while this was showcased in the trailers, it wasn't the entire package. It was just a very small piece of it. The movie is also fairly funny as well. I had a lot of fun with the more humorous scenes, especially the ones that involves one of the twins, the uh, the male twins specifically, and he's talking to Hiccup, he's giving him some advice about things, but instead what he's really doing without actually noticing it is that he's basically insulting Hiccup as a person and, um, you know, for his different uh, choices. And now, again, he doesn't notice because he's trying to give him advice, but this just shows how terrible he is at giving advice. All that being said, though, there were quite a few things about the movie that disappointed me. The villain, whose name is Grimmel, is just plainly a very boring villain. Now, in the first couple of scenes, he shows promise because of how seriously they were taking his character, as well as the fact that uh, early on, um, he anticipates Hiccup and the others anticipating something that he would do, and the way that they tackled it, um, I was thinking that we were going to get a very, uh, foreboding villain, but after that they just kind of made him a bit goofy, but still tried to take him seriously, and it didn't mesh very well. Also, the voice that was given for him kind of took away the fear that I should have felt towards him like I did for Drago in the second film. A few characters also seem to uh, regress in personality compared to um, the first two movies. Um, uh, let me think. Oh, example. Let's uh, let's take Astrid. You know, the main uh, the main romantic or no, the the romantic interest of our, our main character Hiccup. I mean, 
she was always a badass, and I personally left the second movie viewing her and Hiccup as equals because of how much they had learned from each other, and just how much they, br uh, you know, how they've brought out more in each other than, you know, they possibly imagined, or probably imagined out of each other. And of course, I figured that we would get more of that, but... Instead, what we got were moments where, at least three times, this happened at least three times, where another character would tell Astrid to talk to Hiccup uh, when he was beating himself up about something, or maybe believing that he was not uh, fit to lead his people. Um, you know, all because, hey, he listens to you. And then she would go uh, be the one to snap him out of it, pretty much being like, hey, stop it. And then he'd be like, okay, I feel better now. The character of Valka, you know, uh, Hiccup's mother, who we first met in the second movie, was a very important aspect to How to Train Your Dragon 2, and I was expecting to see how hers and Hiccup's uh, relationship had evolved over the past couple of years, you know, seeing them uh, really bounce off of each other, but they, they push her into the background, or it was more like she was shoved a bit becoming very inconsequential other than putting her in one scene so that she could do something important. But other than that, and also uh, the fact that she was the one who was mostly, uh, who was for the most part telling Astrid to, uh, you know, help Hiccup because he listens to her. You know, her character had no purpose in this movie, and because of the fact that she's voiced by Kate Blanchett, who is my second favorite actress of all time, it just pissed me off because I felt like this icon, this legend, wasn't being utilized very well. The narrative was also not as strong as the first two movies. There were there was a lot of meandering going on when there should have been a rush, and but at the same time, the pace was too fast for the most part. I really got a chance to really soak in a scene like I did with the first uh, two films, and I know that I'm saying that a lot where I'm comparing something to the first two films where I'm saying, oh, but it doesn't do it like this. Well, honestly, go ahead and just get, get used to it at this point, uh, because, you know, I'm gonna have to do that in order to give my full opinion, but with the first two, they took their time uh, to really soak in what was whatever was going on in that moment, and I love that part. I love that they were taking themselves seriously to that point. Now, originally, I actually had no issue with the fact that uh, it, it, the pace was kind of fast, because I was thinking, okay, the narrative is kind of a uh, race against time sort of narrative, so I understand why it's it feels like it's rushing, because, you know, lives are at stake, and you know, a lot of people and their dragons could die if they don't hurry up. So, I understood it from that point, but then... Then... While they should have been trying to escape the villain and find this safe haven, this hidden world, Hiccup knowingly allows Toothless to begin courting this, uh, this other Night Fury and even go out solo without him all while this big bad guy is trying to hunt all of them down. And I thought that Hiccup was smarter than this, honestly. And because of the fact that the pacing was so off for the majority of the movie, and they were actually trying to slow it down by focusing on something completely different than really what they should have been, it just it ruins the entire movie for me. There are, as you've most likely noticed from the, um, the marketing, um, you know, there were a couple of flashback sequences involving Stoic, you know, uh, Hiccup's father, who, um, shit, I mean, if, if you haven't seen the second movie, then you're about to be spoiled, because honestly, why, why are you watching a review to a movie, uh, that's the sequel of a movie that you haven't seen, you know, I'm just saying, but, you know, he died in the first movie, and you know, I thought it was kind of weird that, you know, in the marketing, they, um, they were showcasing, um, why am I blanking? I'm sorry, my head hurts right now. Um, when they're showcasing flashbacks, and I'm just, every time I saw them, I was thinking, okay, you know what, the How to Train Your Dragon franchise has done good by me so far, Maybe when I see it in the movie, it will actually work. But 
whatever they occurred, the fi the entire film seemed to kind of stop, kind of like they were meant to be uh, mini intermissions that uh, still showcased a bit of story, and it didn't seem to support the overall narrative, but it looked more like the studio looked through their paperwork and thought, oh shit, Gerard Butler is slate. Gerard Butler's been slated for all three movies, but we killed him in the second one. Uh, maybe we should just add in a couple of flashback sequences so that he can have a role. And before I get to my last uh, bit, I'm going to count this as a pro, but it's a bit of a nitpick, but they, they focus so little on the hidden world itself that um, you know, I... I it, it was to the point where I found it a bit odd that it was the title, you know. The Hidden World being the name of the movie implies that it's the, the primary MacGuffin, or that a good part of the film actually focuses on it. But like, like I felt with Glass, I don't understand why the title was what, what it was, and you know, that's just a side thing. But lastly, my last con with this movie, was that the ending was a bit underwhelming. Actually, I had a bit of an underwhelming feeling uh, in the movie throughout, but it wasn't too strong. It was more like that nagging sound in the back of your head that you can't really get rid of, but you can kind of ignore a little bit. But specifically, the ending was fairly underwhelming. It did wrap up the series in a nice way, but it just felt like they were trying to copy Toy Story 3 in a way, and I hope that doesn't give away any spoilers, but I did have to point that out, that I kind of thought of Toy Story 3 at the end. In the end, I thought How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World, uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3, basically, was a passable film. I did get some enjoyment out of it, but I did think that I would have I, I did think that I would go in uh, enjoying it a bit more because of the fact that I am a fan of this franchise. And in this situation, I feel like I'm the exception to that saying of, if you're a fan of the first film or the other films that preceded it, you know, you'll like this film. I feel like I am the exception to that in this case. And, hey, if you did enjoy the first two, most likely you will enjoy this one. Uh, as well, but personally I came out disappointed. However, it did remind me of why and just how much I love the first two films. And luckily, unlike, unlike Glass, where that movie I watched and thought, oh my god, this, this kind of ruins the other two movies for me, or at least it ruins at least one of them, so I can't watch them with the same amount of excitement or enjoyment as I used to. The good thing about the first two movies was that those did kind of feel like their own separate thing. Yeah, sure, the second one left it open for a possible sequel if they wanted to, but it was still wrapped up in a way where, you know, you didn't have to have one. So, in the end, I can still watch those two movies and enjoy it. I'm most likely not going to watch this movie again. Um... You know, unless I, I truly feel like doing a marathon, but other than that, I don't feel as much of a desire to. But with all that being said, that's it for my review. Guys, thank you so much uh, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not hesitate to hit that like button. And in, I always I always mess this part up, damn it. Um, it and if you haven't already, uh, please do subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with everything that goes on here. And just so that, um, you know, just so that you can help support the channel each each subscription, each like, hell, even even just viewing this video once helps out immensely. You have no idea how much it helps. And with all that being said, I can't wait to do uh, more videos. As you know, I already caught up with my uh, Best Picture nominees, and the Oscars are tomorrow. I, I'm going to try to watch them in some way, but I know that Mallory doesn't really want to, so I'll have to figure out what to do with that. Um, Starting a little bit later this week, I'm actually probably going to uh, release a couple of videos on my birthday, but I'm still doing catch-up with a lot of the movies that I missed uh, last year. I will tell you that the first uh, review that I'm going to do this week, as far as catch-up, is going to be The Meg. That's the first one that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do a couple of others, and mm, I can't really think of 
any anything else. Oh yeah, and sometime this week I will do like a, a kind of recap of the Oscars. Hopefully I'll be able to like watch the full thing or at least or at least I'll I'll touch on how I feel about who the winners are and also compare um you know what my predictions were to what actually came up. But anyway, before I start rambling, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys for watching. Farewell until the next video and you guys have a good day.